Let's start with the music anyway, so I'm gonna hit it for now anyway. Okay, mate. Oh, well, let's not share that straight away. Cool. Yeah. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you. We hope you have a wonderful time. Now, you don't want to be late. And time to put the finishing touches. Yeah, good nice. evening. Good evening, nice Space. Andrew. Yeah, nice one, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Andrew Trippington, the Imaginary Cat's handyman, and I'm here with the one and only, the legend, Space Tribe, um, also known as Ollie. How are you doing, Ollie? Yeah, I'm doing good. Crazy times in lockdown here, but very creative in the end, actually. Yeah, no, good. Yeah, that, that sort of time is, it's like time we'll never have again in a way, isn't it? So we can um, pretty much do anything. I guess for you, you've been, you've been busy. I, I, I heard the tune, um, the, the latest one that you did set with the um, vinyl that you showed in the latest video. Okay, yeah, no, it's come out very nice for sure. Yeah, cool. No, so, so normally you, um, you make the tunes with, with people, isn't it? So how, how was it? Um, being solo, have you have you still been collaborate, collaborating with people, or have you, have you been doing stuff on your own? First, there is no normal. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know what normal is. <laughs> Maybe we're the new new what is normal now. But I, I love to make music with my friends. Um, yeah. Collaboration is really a lot of fun because you come up with something that you wouldn't come up with by yourself necessarily. Yeah, and you can bounce off people, isn't it? Like the, someone comes up with a creative idea, and you and you can too. It's, it's it's great, isn't it? Yeah. No, cool. Like, so tell me, tell me your brand, Space Tribe. What what does it stand oh. for? What does it represent? Space. Well, maybe I'll go a bit 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 back earlier than that. You know. Okay. For me, I've I've always been in music since I was a teenager. Um, um, showing my age, uh, I started when the punk revolution happened in 1977 and I had my first first punk record released in that year so that's like you know 43 years ago now how old were you then uh like 18 oh, cool, cool. so anyway I went through the punk times and then and then we started it then I got together with a group of friends and we started a, a, a band called specimen and this band was like gothic glam band very Naughty, leather, lace, very punky, very gothic. And we, we opened a club in London called Batcave. Yep. And the Bat, the Batcave became like the start of the whole kind of goth story in London. It was the hub of where it started. So, And you had the Gargoyle Night, is that correct? Well, that was one of the clubs that we held the Batcave in. You know, the Batcave oh, okay. Where, oh yeah, so it's the other way around. The, the um, Batcave was the night and the Gargoyle was the club. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, we was we were such a naughty band. We signed for a major le re record label. We put posters all over London that just said "blasphemy, lechery, and blood." That's all they said. <laughs> and it had a couple of hit singles, and we f toured America and caused a chaos. And then we fell out with. Oh no! We've lost it. We've lost it. Reconnecting. Hello, I don't know if uh, anyone can still hear you. I think I should shut this down, that's too much. Shut down. Yeah, shut down, down. just shut the computer. Oh, we lost it. We lost it. Shit. Busy. Uh, I don't know if anyone can hear me still. Uh, shit. Let me just check uh, if you can hear me. I hope you're having a nice day. And you're all sexy motherfuckers. Let me just see what's going on. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. 
さあこれ出して目指して目指して目指して目指して目指してあ、oh, cool. so you, you guys can still hear me but not but not space tribe、um, I'm gonna give him a call and、um, but yeah I hope I hope you're all good anyway I hope you're enjoying your evening and、uh, you are all legends and sex motherfuckers I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call him back and we're gonna get him back cool But yeah, I hope you're doing good and I hope、uh, the lockdown is not too boring for everyone. I hope you're all、uh, enjoying yourselves as best you can and you haven't lost too much money or, or anything like that. My, my, my internet went down completely on this laptop. Like, give, give me a minute and let's try it again, yeah? Okay, mate. Well, I'll, I'll talk to them and, and just let me know when I can call you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, nice you, one. Are you, you're, are you still on it then, yeah?、Is、yeah, I am.、On? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm okay, talking to I'll them. I'll be there in a the sec. All right, all right. Well, yeah, nice one, guys.、Uh, so, you, you heard that. He's coming back. But for now,、um, I just want to tell you a bit about what I've been doing in lockdown because obviously、uh, I, I run the Trippington's pay, the Trippington's ball, and、um, I've been very much thinking about the future. I have not,、uh, not stopped. I've sort of been、um, doing a lot of artwork because、uh, it's Trippington, the imaginary cat, and his friends and their adventures.、Uh, And I've, I've sort of、uh, thought of new characters, etc. Ah,、oh, right, he's coming back now. Excellent. Happy days. Cool, here he is. Okay. We're back again. We're back. Some nice little technical issues here. <laughs> Happy days. Anyway, where I was, I was talking about the band that I was playing. So, anyway, after, after that band split up in like mid late 80s, I thought, well, what am I going to do now? Because, you know, the music industry stinks so bad, actually. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go traveling and let's see what comes next in my life. Yeah. And off I went to Indonesia and then to Thailand. And then finally, I came to a place called Koh Phangan in 1988, which is a tiny little island in south of Bangkok. And that's where the full moon parties were just beginning up. And they were a kind of spillover from what was happening in Goa in India. And it was completely revolutionary. Of course, it was, it was doused and soaked in LSD. So, <laughs> Excellent. So the, the parties in Koh Phangan, maybe they were three, four hundred people, of people that stayed and lived on the island and partied together. and Chilled out together in the daytime and took lots of acid together at, at the night time. No, very and, nice. The, the sunrises and stuff must have been pretty be beautiful in that kind of a scenario. Well, it was amazing. And in that time, there were no roads there, no cars, no motorbikes. It was just really beautiful nature, you know. So I found a new way to go back into music, right? Because it wasn't like, for, you know, with the, the band before, it was like, okay, you know, with the music industry, you do. The album and do the tour to sell the album, to promote, to sell, to tour, to basically, you know. But what is the point of the music? Is it just like a commercial so you can like hang everything you're doing off that? Well, anyway, we fell foul of the re major record companies because we wouldn't compromise and that's why it fell apart. So when I discovered the parties there in Koh Phangan, I found a new way to go back into music again. and From the point where music, what it can actually do to people to open people's consciousness, to actually create the space where you can see yourself well enough and change the whole way that you live, actually, you know? So. Well, it definitely connects people as well when you're, when you're、um, having an experience at the party and you're looking at someone else who is also having this, like, their own experience and you can connect through, through, through it. It's, it is a beautiful thing, isn't it?、It's, that's right. So, you know. That's why I had my first wow moment. You know, and I think everybody, everybody who's, who's into this story has a wow moment where、yeah. you have this moment where you're there, suddenly everything makes complete sense, and it changes you actually forever. You can't go back from there. You know? I mean, here we are in virus times, but you could say that, that what we do here, it's, it's like a virus because once you're infected, you can't go. Back from there, you know.、Um, and it's very interesting because 
It's never been in fashion. Side trance has never been a fashion. If it's a fashion is one day in fashion and the next day it's out of fashion. But this has been going on now since, for me, since 1990, since 1989. So more than 30 years. It is completely unique, isn't it? Like, it, like I, I feel the same thing as the same thing that you just said. Really, it's like a timeless kind of a um, unique, unique thing that, for, for me at least, is kind of like incomparable to anything else. Really, you go to a pop after or a drum and bass gig, or nothing touches the sides anymore because you, you know, there's something physiological that happens in side trance with this beat range from like 135 to 150. Yeah where when you're on the dance floor at one point your heartbeat will sync up with this 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 is this is where your heart beats at when you're full power out there on the dance floor which is why suddenly you're out there dancing and the next thing you know it's the morning already <laughs> yeah no i don't i don't exactly like, really. like physiologically synced up with the music that's playing at that bpm so so this is why it's like a virus and once you catch it you can't go back from from there because You've experienced this space where your heartbeat sync up with the music, and that feels so fucking right. Yeah, it does. It does. So, so uh, you you just made me think of something actually. When when you're not not when you're performing, but when you're just at, at a party, for example, and you're in front of the sound system, how? Because I think it's different for everyone. How do you describe side trance? Because for me, I I think of the kick, like you said, as the heartbeat, the bass as kind of like the pumping heart, and then the synths kind of like the universe taking the piss out of you. How would you describe it? Well, I don't know if I, I mean, because it's not very easy to kind of lay the definition of what it is, you know. It's more yeah. about what it does and what you can experience through that, you know. So it's very hard hard to define that thing. Um, anyway, going back to where I was, I got a bit sidetracked there. Um, going back to where I was in Copangan, I was there for about a year and a half until the the locals got so scared of us and, and the acid that we were taking and they thought we were like, you know, aliens coming out of the speakers that we had to kind of leave there for our safety in 1990. And then we, a <laughs> load of, whole load of us, right? And then we turned up in Goa the next year. And, and well, Goa, Goa is the place where it all, it all began with side trance. And it began, well, in the 70s and 80s, you know, that people were, it, it was, it's a place of freaks and misfits. It's not a hippie love and peace place. It's really intense place, actually. You know, oh, really? and it's and you know it started with in, in the seventies with you know actually with with some hippies that stayed there and started living in houses and they started making making their own band nights and on full moons especially. There'd, there'd be parties going on there, but you know, with, with one guy who had a bass there. In fact, that was Goa Gill. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> he was the bass player because he had the only bass <laughs> in Goa, and That's a few others, yeah. That, and they they kind of founded this whole scene. Oh no, have we lost him again? Oh no. Okay, so I think um, he's lost his internet connection again, but but that's okay. I think he'll. Um... He'll, he'll get back, that's all right. Um, for the meantime, I'm going to tell you a joke. Um, have you heard about the restaurant on the moon? Uh, great food, no atmosphere. Uh, it's a shame my mate Brian's not here now, because if he if he did, he would he would know so many more jokes than me. But that's, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, I'll go back to what I was doing. Uh, I've been, been painting a lot. Uh, painting Trippet and the Imaginary Cat, because obviously he's going to go on adventures of confusion. And uh, I thought of a new... Oh, I form a new character called Dr. Quackers, and he is the Techno Duck. Uh, the story is that he collects mushrooms for his own pride, but then uh, he, one day he discovers one that, um, that can talk, and this particular mushroom tells him of tripping to an imaginary cat and their garden, and, um, and then he goes on a mission, a quest, to find this garden, and I'm sure he will succeed. Um, yeah, other than that, the, the weather's been beautiful. Um, to be honest, if the weather was rubbish, that would be a bit, a bit pooey, but um, with the beautiful weather, I've just sort of been uh, um, 
See, I wasn't going to mention acid actually, but Space Tribe already has, so I'm going to mention it. Uh, I've been sort of like taking acid and going for long walks in the woods and fantasizing about world domination and uh, all of the sexy things that I can do to the universe. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have all been alright, because it has been a weird time and everything, and um, it has been strange for all of us, strange days. As as Jim Morrison said, this is the strangest life that I've ever lived. And, uh, oh, here it is, he's coming back. Nice one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's alright, mate. No worries. Okay, at this point I better light a split. <laughs> Anyway, so in, I spent like five years in Goa living there and got chased by the police. And now we had some parties there where, you know, the parties are free parties for whoever wants to come. There's LSD punch for whoever wants to LSD punch. <laughs> it's not excellent. About a thousand people. And, and this just like blew the doors off somehow, you know, and whoever was there in this time, especially like from 90 to 95, that's where the big explosion happened. To, to be being there in this time, I feel very, very lucky, actually, and that's where I started playing parties and started making music. I had a small studio there in Goa, and, and it all unrolled from there. Um, the scene unrolled from there. It unrolled from Goa. Oh, cool. so, a big scene in London with Butterfly Studios, with Tip Records, with Blue Room Records. It went to Germany as well with the Vuv Experience Party. I, I took it also to places like Japan and Australia and to San Francisco. I mean, I took it to San Francisco because that's where we got the good acid from. <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome, awesome. So, <laughs> more supply. And, and, you know, the funny thing is, is that, you know, it was a group of us and we were moving around the planet and we were making these different events in these different countries in London, in Switzerland, in San Francisco, in Australia, in Japan. And it was actually the, the LSD that made it happen. No, we it, it meant, because we had the LSD, we could go to these places and set up an event for free, bring the sound system, bring, the, bring everything, bring the music, bring the decorations, and make a punch, and and turn on the world. Yeah. And, 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 it was, and it was very much a mission in that time. It's like taking this whole acid and acid music and party story out there on the planet. So that's what 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 started to happen. And now at this point, it's completely global. You know, with massive festivals. Everywhere. Mm. Uh, still, I think still in the UK, it's quite. It, it's definitely quite a small thing. Do you do you think uh, one day it'll be fully mainstream everywhere, or do you think it'll well, always be a subculture? I mean, there's noisily festival, isn't there? I yeah, mean, there that, is. Yeah, that that's that's a pretty big festival. You know that. You know, it's difficult with the authorities in the UK, but that will give you an idea of how many people have got an appetite for it. Anyway, yeah. many many people. You know. Um. Yeah. So anyway. We were in Goa. I was there. My brother Mikey was there with me. And at the end of the Goa season, before when monsoon comes, we wanted to go somewhere for a while. So we thought, okay, we'll go to Bali. We'll go to Bali and we'll make some wall hangings and some clothing to sell on the flea market in Goa, so we don't All have right. to go and work somewhere or whatever, you know. So and that's the clothing brand where it started. Off we went to Bali. Between me and Mikey and a friend called Richmond, we started a brand called Space Tribe Clothing there and started to make wall hangings and the first fractal lycra leggings and, and t shirts and stuff like this. Like you're wearing one of the, the really old school ones now. Yep, a very good jacket, by the way, people. Got very uh, many, many hidden pockets. I've never lost anything while wearing this jacket. <laughs> you might lose your mind though, but hey. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Every time, every time. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and, and we thought we'd made enough six months in, in Goa for the flea market. And we got back there and it was all gone in a week. All oh, right, cool. So, okay. We How made much money did you make? At, at, at the end of the Goa season and we made some more. And so Space Tribe clothing was kind of 
formed by accident in a way. There was no, oh, let's go and make a business and a clothing company and blah, blah, blah. Mm. So, you know, it, 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 um, the, the clothing story all happened. It all got very popular. I told Mikey, my brother, well, you do the clothes, I'll do the music. We're all still based, right? Because, so did he paint, does he actually paint the, um, the artwork itself? He, he does, he does a, the designs, he does all the designs for all the Space Tribe records and all the Mad Tribe records since, mm. since 30 years or whatever, it's 25 years of, of like, these releases. He is very good, he is, he is, he is good, and, it, and um, I think it does resonate with, with anyone who's into Psycharts and the scene and everything, it, it does sort of like, res- it, it says basically what you're feeling, I, th- I think. Yeah, and in the end, I had to leave Goa because it became too dangerous for me. Oh, really? It became too dangerous for me because I was a DJ. I was high profile there. They knew who I was, and and I was making parties. And so in the end, the drug squad would come around to my house three times a year. You'd have to keep a special stash of cash for the cops. Not too much, but not too little. (laughs) <laughs> but not your main stash because because they all come at any time, and they would throw a piece of charas through the window, and come in and tell you, ah, ten years, ten years, you've got a problem. Why do you so think you, that is? I mean, why do, why so do you, you think that is? So you, you had to negotiate with the cops with the money that you had, especially in the house. <laughs> well, I found it, yeah, cool. And but by '95, like man, they were coming around to my house like three or four times a year, like this, and I just felt. I didn't feel free there anymore. So at that point, I moved to Byron Bay in Australia. And I stayed there for about 18 years, actually. I had a a studio up there, which was solar powered, up in the rainforest. I lived really out there in the wild. My daughter was born there, up in the, up in the, Rainforest outside, oh, wow. no midwife, only me and the mother there together. So wow. it was a pr- pretty blissful time, really. And yeah, and since then I've been touring and making music and enjoying enjoying the life, really, and watching this this fantastic story spread around the planet. No, no, no it's beautiful. Uh, I, I do have a question about. Um, uh, you said they were quite heavy-handed with you in, in, in Goa. Why do you think the, their culture sort of rejected the Sartreans movement? Oh, no, the, the local Indians love it. Oh, okay. But this is the cops, right? Okay, right. so you have to, it's pretty corrupt there. So if, you're, if you want a job on the Goa drug squad, you don't come from Goa. You come from Delhi or Mumbai or somewhere else. But you have to pay a lot of money to get that job because they know you're going to be able to make a lot on all the bribes on all the people in Goa. So, you know, there's like the freaks versus the cop story was insane there. So it's like a business for them almost. Like a business, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, but that does sound beautiful. But so in all of those times, is there, is there like an uh, individual story that, that sort of sticks out in your mind? Maybe like an uh, interesting person that you met, some shits and giggles that you had. Is there, is there any sort of like funny stories you could tell us? Uh, uh, there, there, are, there are so many stories from Goa. But it was so, like I say, drenched in acid. But, but it was, I, I say Goa, I mean, like I said, it wasn't like a peace and love hippie place. It was like gladiator training school of life. <laughs> you, got, you you got faced with challenges like you couldn't believe. Like, for instance, there's a place called the Primrose where right. everybody used to go every night to smoke chillings, and you know that it was just like dirt tracks going out of there, six different directions, and every night there'd be like six cops with sticks trying to get stick their put their stick through your wheel. Oh wow. And, throw you off your bike and get money out of you. So it was like you had to, had to actually drive, choose which side to drive at. Okay, I aim left or I aim right. And, rook, and strap, then they jump out of the way. And this kind of thing you had to do. It sounds exciting, to be honest with you. It sounds exciting as hell. Yeah, no, it was very, very, very interesting times in Goa. Now, now it's a bit more tame there, but, but the magic is still very much there, that's for sure. Yeah, so do you, uh, do you still go there now? I go every year. I spend a couple of weeks there every year. I don't spend like 
months and months there at a time anymore because I'm I'm too busy for that these days, you know. And yeah. These are different times, but but yeah, I love going back there every year. So <laughs> you can still appreciate that stuff. Uh, so yeah. so when you were making the music back then, like in the nineties and stuff, because obviously uh, the technology is evolving all the time. Um, well, what was the difference in the technology while, when you were actually making the tunes? Were you, were you using, like, obviously um, the DAWs and stuff didn't exist, so what were you using? Well, completely different equipment. I mean, yes, we'd still use a computer, but it would just be a sequencer. So it had to go out to a room full of synthesizers and what, whatever you had, which made it very interesting because it meant that everybody's studio was different. Yeah. Because yeah. Now, now everybody can have exactly the same shit inside their computer same plug-in same but now you can buy your Cytrance sample pack etc like this there was nothing like that there you had to create everything from the ground up you know so so yeah with limited means so yeah, it must be very, very interesting yeah that must be very exciting do you, so do you ever use any of those um, sort of same same devices now uh, for fun or, or do you just use Purely the, inter the um, modern definitely, software. Yeah, I definitely use some old, older synths. I've got an Oscar here, and I've got an old, a couple of old Rolands here, and they've got a bite like some of the old, the new synthesizers don't have. So, yeah, and and you know, it's also use that stuff in your studio that are actually instruments outside. Is you'll come up with different sounds than than everybody else is using. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, cool. Because I guess they they have a lot. Like the um, with any synthesizer, the possibilities are endless, really. And you could, I guess, you could probably just have fun for hours if you if you wanted to. If you didn't have anything to do that day, because it was, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but it's nice to be tactile. It's nice to get your hands on the knobs. It's nice to like get it up loud and kind of feel it in the studio, like playing an instrument rather than just a mouse on a on a plug-in. So, mm. yeah, no, it can be inspiring to have the synth in your hands. No, cool. And, and also the sound systems was another thing I was wondering about, because obviously these days we have um, like, like uh, the Void and Function 1 and uh, Element 5 and stuff. Were they, did they, were they as, as sexy looking as that back in the day or, or were well, they different? In, 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 in India in 1990. Well, I'll tell you a little story about that, actually, you know, because the first, the, the first set that I played there was in a place called Bamboo Forest, the first party we made with a friend of mine, Piers, in the, we set him up in a teepee with the, as the wizard with a <laughs> acid punch in the cauldron, and you had to go to the teepee to get your your acid there. And we bought Very nice. we bought the first twenty k sound system there for the first time. It hadn't been more than about four or five k before that. Right. And I also bought the first DATs, the first portable DAT players. I went to Japan especially that year because Sony had just bought them out and, and the, the difference in the, the sound, because before that it was all professional Walkmans, which is cassettes, because you couldn't use records there because it's on the beach and there's dust and wind and you know, so they oh, were right. professional cassette, professional Walkman cassettes that they started on. So, so that's where a big step up, you know, and we had complaints from the town 25 miles away and <laughs> a lot of the other DJs there instantly disliked me from that moment, you know. I mean, it was pretty political already then with the DJs somehow. Yeah, no, it must be beautiful, though, party on the beach. That's, that's something I've never experienced before. I've been, like, been to the parties in the mountains and stuff like that, but never the beach. That, that must be cool as hell, to be honest. Well, I may, you know, amazing, you know, you've got 4,000, 5,000 people all completely tripping off their heads on the same buzz, on the same, you know, and it, it's connected. It's really connected, you know. Now, nowadays, you know, I go to party, I see so many people putting this stuff up their nose that will do the opposite, will take them the opposite of where we're trying to go with this story, you know. If you take cocaine, it's yeah. going to prevent you from getting high. So, you know, this whole scene was really built on psychedelics, on yeah, mind expansion, on isn't it? SD, on mushrooms, on on DMT. <laughs> yeah, well, they they are um, very very unique things, and uh, I, I kind of see them as a gift, a gift from the universe to to sort of allow us a better life. 
like that. But for, for me, I'm, it's sort of uh, opened me to side trials, and without it, I don't know where I'd be to it. So, so yeah, they are great things. But um, but going to the sort of like modern day times, um, well, you, so you're sort of all over the world, at, like in your private yeah, sometimes you're in a different country. The last three months, that's for sure. Yeah, apart from the last few months, of course. <laughs> that must be a change for you. As well. How is that for you? It is a change, but honestly, you know, in some ways I've really enjoyed it because when you get on a plane somewhere, especially on some of the long flights every week, it's, it's, it's tough. It's not, you know, everyone thinks that must be really super glamorous and stuff. Yeah, mo- moments of it are, but, but a, a lot of it isn't at all. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's hard doing all that traveling. So, you know, it's given me a break and I've just been in the studio and being creative and, all, all good, you know. It's going to start again soon enough. You know, this this time will pass. Mm. No, that, yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and I did hear the uh, the bigger bang, and, and it is is awesome. How how long did that take to produce? Um, well, it, it happened over a, a few sessions. Can I show you here? This is bigger bang. It's coming out on Monday, and it's yeah, lovely lovely picture of this vinyl here. That's one nice. side, bigger bang. And the other side's called Instant Enlightenment. And I don't know if you can see, it's got me and Roger and Max on there. So, super excited about this. Yeah, yeah, no, I bet. I bet. Uh, uh, the, art, the artwork is something else. Like, I've never really seen that on a vinyl before, so I would actually like a complete psychedelic art, art on a vinyl. It's cool, cool as hell. But, um, so, what's my job the like? The art, the art is what's important, you know. Mm. That's, the, the art, the, the art, the music, the tension, the art, the way you present it, the way you wrap it up, mm. to have interesting and innovative ideas, you know, not to make tracks to be famous, to get booked, to do all that stuff, but to really create the art that, you know, people can really enjoy. That's That's the intent. Mm. And it, the beautiful thing about art, actually, is it it can represent a um, sort of subculture. In this case, the side arts one to to people who wouldn't um, sort of normally think of it, and then it gets accepted by the, by those people because it's a beautiful. No one can argue with the results. I think. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's right. Yeah, exactly. But, but yeah. Um, so is there is there any um, so with the performing as. Uh, on stage with your DJ, would you? How would you compare that to being on stage with Specimen? Is there is there a difference? Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's it's very different, you know, because because with, with Specimen, the, it's very much all about the show. Yeah, you know, and about people looking at you. Whereas whereas these these days with psychedelic trance, it's all about the music first, and and you know, if you use visuals, they're mainly generated visuals around you you know for for your mind to trip out on basically you know it's not it's not about the show of, of, of what you do so much anymore you know yeah 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 i can, I can see that because um because i've been in a band as well and i found uh, being in a band it's more about me but then um obviously putting on a party is more about the, the collective experience would you say it's similar to that for you yeah yeah well you know it's about it's about the music and it's about you, you know, for me, you go to a rock concert and you go to be entertained. Yeah. Well, you go to a party and you are the entertainment. You are your own entertainment. You know, it's it's not about him up there. It's about me and me and me and me. Yes. Yeah. yeah it, is, it is about the people and and uh, the, the people are, are are brilliant, aren't they? Like you, because it's such a sort of like free free environment, like you said, and. Um, and you do meet some sort of like legends. So you wouldn't you wouldn't meet them in in Asda, do you know? What I mean, you would you would only meet them in the mountains or the beach or something like that, isn't it? But um, okay, so I got another question for you. Um, your brand is is a huge success, and you 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 pretty much won the game of life. What what advice <laughs> would you give to to anyone who wants to also win the game of life? <laughs> well, I don't know about the game of life. I mean, for me. Success is, like I said to you earlier, is success is never having to have a box for a start, you yeah. know, never having to do a job that you hate doing and it takes up all your time and energy, you know. For me, I feel very blessed because I've been able to spend my life 
doing music that I love to do. So it's not like work. Mm. It's just it's just enjoyable, you know. And you know what I would encourage people to do is find what it is they love to do. Whatever that is, you know, music, anything. What it can, you know, it can be fit. find what you love to do, and and make that your work because. It, it won't feel like work then. You'll just enjoy what you do. And and if you like it, you will become expert much more easily than if you hate it. Yeah, yeah, because it's not a chore, is it? It's uh, an enjoyable thing. Do you, do you ever look forward, do you ever need to look forward to Friday? <laughs> I don't even know what day it is for the last three months. I have to like, look at my computer to tell me what day it is. <laughs> no, well, this is the only reason I know that it's Thursday today, to be fair. So. It is an interesting time, isn't it? It is interesting because I don't think we'll ever experience something like this again. So it's interesting to see what everyone's doing with their time. And uh, it seems like you've been doing the right thing, uh, keeping the music going and stuff. Well, it's, you know, it's the right thing for me, is all I can say. You know, everybody's got, else has got their own right thing, but, you know, I'm happy to have done what I like to do. Yeah, no, good, good. We will we'll do what makes us happy. Uh, so with, with your actual, with your actual brand, do you think you're still, you're, because you um, have quite a lot, there's quite a lot of branches to it, and you seem quite forward thinking with it. Um, do you think you will expand it even further or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it never stops anyway, you know. I mean, it's the, the creative role runs out, you know. My, I do a, a lot with my project Mad Tribe these days, where we, we, which is a li little bit more of a show. I mean, when we play in Brazil, we have a fantastic VJ working with us called Pickles, and he takes all our artworks and animates them, and, and yeah, it's really cartoony and a lot of fun. Yeah, no, awesome, awesome. So, so with the big festivals now, like, uh, like, uh, say, in the last ten years, is there any moments in the last ten years, performance-wise, that really stood out in your mind? Well, there, there, there are so many moments over the years. You know, I could say that, that one of the really big moments was the Slips Festival in '99 in Hungary. Okay. Right. It's it's now called Azora Festival. Oh, I didn't know. And, that. Okay. And um, now it's massive. Now it's like 30,000 people every year and an amazing place. But they, the reason that place got used in the first place was it was where a solar eclipse was happening in 1999. And, and um, the guy Fish who organized it went looking along the line of where the eclipse is going to go to find where he could make a festival. And he found this farm right there in Azura, and 30,000 people came to this festival. It was in 1999, so it's pretty early days for trance, trans, psychedelic trance still, and that was the first really major international gathering of that kind of level, and, you know, it took a sun eclipse to to bring everybody there. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I would I would have been three, three years old in 1999, so... <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, a special mention goes to the parties in Brazil as well, you know, absolutely amazing, amazing parties and festivals in Brazil, Universo Paralelo, oh, yeah. Beach and Bahia every two years, and Adana Festival, and many, many other really super nice, nice parties and festivals there. Yeah, cool. So with, with the actual uh, sort of cultures in the in the different countries, would you say that that um, it's all sort of found, within the sidetracks, of course? Uh, would you say it's all sort of founded off the same the same kind of idea, or, or would you say there's quite big differences between the different countries? There's, there's no difference at all. It's one big global family with yeah. the Brazil branch, Mexico branch, Australia branch, but it's all the same family somehow. So. You, you never, you never think, oh, it's really different. Even, even in Russia, it's still the same family. Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. One, one world, isn't it? One world. Because it's all these people that have discovered this for themselves. They, like I said, it wasn't. It's not fashion. They haven't had it pushed on them. Their mate said, "Come and check this out. Yeah. You've got to come." You know, that's how you end up going. You know, so, so like it's based on real experiences, not just. An experience has been pushed on you and you go and pay your money and you go and consume it you know it's like right. something real and and it's the same real for everybody around the planet i think yeah yeah that no, cool do you do you miss do you miss the uh, physical festivals at the moment with, with what's going on yeah absolutely absolutely miss it um but you know it's, it's going to come again soon and 
And in some ways, it, it might be good for the whole scene as well because it maybe levels out the playing field and, and you know, there's a lot of big, big agents very pushy out there with making sure that they, they get these artists on these festivals. So, and a lot of people who who should be there who are actually making the tracks that aren't there. So I hope in this time that this all levels out a little bit and, and our scene grows more heartful, more heartful, less cocaine, more heart, more yeah. psychedelic. More acid, more acid. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> more acid, stronger acid. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when was your first ever psychedelic trip? Oh, oh, when I was like 20 or something like that. So a long time ago. Oh, cool. And was that a Psytrance party or was that something? Some no, no, Psytrance was like nowhere to be seen for another <laughs> another 15 years or 20 years when that happened. <laughs> right, cool. oh, I assume it blew your mind, I assume, that, that first uh, first trip. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, I had I had some good good times with acid before Psytrance ever came along. What, what about DJ? I got acid. Is that something you've done? Yeah, I've been DJing where I can't even tell the floor the tape and, but somehow you get through <laughs> yeah yeah your mind, mind just, works for you just, isn't it? just don't freak out and you'll be fine you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's that's kind of good life advice and everything really isn't it just, just take it like uh i can't remember who said was it terence mckenna who says uh take it easy dude but take it isn't it mm -hmm. but, but yeah cool man so so everyone is uh having a quiet time and and we're we're all making art uh no i, I can't wait well we, I, we've booked you for um the trippington school in october 17th so i'm looking forward to that i'm hoping that that goes ahead and everything well, that's right hopefully by october we can do do the parties here in in uk yeah yeah no i'm, I'm looking forward to it man so so yeah uh i wish everyone a great evening and um you've been with with me and space tribe uh should, yeah. should, we, should we have a look and see if uh, anyone's asked any questions on the uh, on the on the thing? Uh, oh, someone wished good day. Uh, someone said go to the tribe. Uh, someone said come back when when we lost you. <laughs> um, no, cool. Uh, so there's no questions from the audience. So uh, if, if anyone's listening, you've got any questions for Space Tribe? Here's your here's your chance. And I'll leave you, uh, and I'll, I'll leave it with a track from the, one of the new tracks from Mad Tribe and the Electric Universe. Nice one. Thanks a lot for coming, everybody. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Yeah, cheers, cheers, mate. Nice one. Okay, signing out. Nice one.